to ask you a, a behind-the-scenes monetary issue. The group, we all know how this is made up. It's the Power Five conferences, the S ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, and Pac-12. And then there are the group of five, which are, you know, less, some of them are mid-majors you would call. And you hate using that word. It's more of a basketball term. But uh, the smaller schools, uh, but also some of them are really good this year, including Memphis. The Power Conferences are making $51 million per conference. The smaller one, the group of five, they're only making $15 million. Why the discrepancy? Is it literally just the eyes that are interested in those schools? Um, the, the, there is the eyes factor, uh, not the eye test, not mm -hmm. to be confused with the eye test. No, because <laughs> the eye test, some of those, those, those mid-majors are maybe better than some of the Power 12 or the, yeah, the Power 5. Interestingly, when we went from the BCS to the CFP, the biggest single recip benef benef beneficiary percentage-wise was those conferences that people call the group of five. They tripled their revenue from the BCS days. No other conference had that kind of increase. So big point in their favor. They are delighted to have what they have. Uh, uh, you know, they're delighted with the system. They're glad to be a part of it. Yeah, no, um, the Market market factors did come into play with the revenue this distribution. I, I can't say anything else other than that. It happens to be the truth. Now, they are happy, and I, you can imagine. They double their revenues, they triple their revenues, whatever it may be. But do you ever get the, get the sense that they want more, right? They want the opportunity for their program to be on an elite level with some of the big boys in college sports. And so that sometimes that doesn't happen because they get excluded from the Final Four. This CFP gives them a much better opportunity than they ever had with the BCS. First of all, they're guaranteed a spot in the top-tier bowl game. They didn't have that with the BCS. Wonderful opportunity, great forum for them. Uh, and, of course, with a four-team tournament, that's two more slots, and, and they're in the hunt. People ask me all the time, Bill, don't you think they're never going to get in this? No, I don't think that. Play a good schedule, win your games, be good like some of those teams are this year, and absolutely they're going to be in the hunt. Yeah, Bill, Bill Hancock, executive director of the college football playoff here on CBS Sports uh, Radio. Do you think that teams, they boost their schedule, uh, they ultimately start, like TCU, right? And they, they, they become, a in, in our minds, a national power. But then they jump to a big, a, a, a Power Five conference. You think that's going to happen? You think that's a danger for some of these smaller conferences like the American Athletic? Oh, I don't – you never can tell about conference uh, realignment. Yeah. Conference realignment's been happening ever since the 20s. So it's been a part of college athletics for a long time, and I, I know enough to, to say n never say never. Uh, obviously, TCU was in three conferences after they left the Southwest Conference. Now they're third here, yeah. and they're delighted to be a part of the Big 12. So it, it, this has obviously been great for them, great for Utah. Uh, I'm not sure I see a downside in, in what's happened to those schools. Yeah, no, I think you see a lot of it's recruiting as well, and it's revenue. It's, at the end of the day, you want to create as much revenue – uh, as, you, as you can, even though it's a, a intercollegiate uh, type situation. A couple, a couple more things here, Bill. Uh, when I look at uh, you know the, the the teams that are vying for the top four spots, and you see the independent in Notre Dame, uh, you see all of the factors that go into it, like the the strength of schedule, et cetera. How do you go about picking the committee? Because it's going to change, right? It's not uh, Pat Hayden has stepped off. We all saw, all saw, saw uh, uh, Oliver Luck step off. How do you go about picking the committee? Because it's such an, an important task in college football. Uh, we didn't do anything more important when cre we created the playoff than picking these people for this committee. High integrity, terrific reputations, know the game, bright people. And how it happened was the conference commissioners each were invited to nominate 10 people. And then we just went through the names and said them, here, her, him, 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 and went down the road like that. Uh, but the key was high integrity. And then the second thing was diversity of, of, of background and, and geographic diversity. We wanted people that looked at this differently. So we have a, we have a journalist on there. We have two people that have been – three people and have been administrators – not coaches. The, the majority of the people were former coaches or former players. We have a great balance, and we get lots of different opinions. And boy, do they ever, <laughs> they, do they ever state their opinions? Yeah, no, they. The, the, yeah. the conversations are very pointed. Yeah, no, I can imagine they are. And last question for you: Do you um, feel for Jeff Long, who has to step up every week now, <laughs> who's a chairman, and answer the questions about, well, why this team? Well, why this team? Well, why this team? Why not this team? 
Oh, Jeff does a great job, and I'm so glad that we can explain to the public how this is operating, explain what the committee's thinking. And it's it, it's a little difficult because when we say the committee, we tend to think of it as singular, when in fact it's the subjective opinions of 12 people combined together. So Jeff goes out and represents the, the 12 the virgin opinions. Um, but he, he does a great job with that, and I'm, I'm, we're, we're just uh, very fortunate that he's able to devote his time and energy to make it happen. Well, I think we all like the system. and The BCS, you're right, it served a purpose, Bill, and, and now we like the college football playoff and, and how it works out because it creates – interesting and awesome debate and then sports radio that's all you can want <laughs> <laughs> bill i appreciate you joining me this morning uh, good luck going forward with the college football playoff I'm, i know we'll be talking about it a lot 